Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss further into partial fraction decomposition, and now look at uh, what happens when the factors are nonlinear inside the uh, denominator. So basically, in my earlier videos, I went over techniques for for partial fraction decomposition for the cases where the factors were linear. So in this case, this one's if you this could be writ rewritten as three x plus two. Just factor out the x. Uh, out there, so this is going to be x plus 1. So as you can see, these uh, factors are linear right here, and I covered out how to solve this one. In this case, these are also linear right there, so this x is linear, this x minus 1 is linear and repeats. And I covered that that video in my earlier, in my, yeah, in my last video I covered this concept, but, but these are all linear. So that begs the question, what if the factors were nonlinear or irreducible? So like this one, we reduce this, but what happens if we can't? So let's consider the following rational function right here, which is, yeah, which is x minus 3 over, this is going to be x cubed plus, yeah, plus 3x right here. Now this one we could uh, simplify this further, we could break this down into now it's x minus 3, factor out the x, so this will be well x squared plus 3, and now we can't uh, reduce this anymore, now this is nonlinear because there's a power of 2 there, so nonlinear and we can't reduce, so we can't reduce this, so yeah, so in this case, if we were to apply basically the same technique as previously shown in my earlier video, we come across a problem. So let's look at this right here. So x minus 3, this is going to be an x, x squared plus 3. If we use the same technique, make sure to watch that in an earlier video. Basically, we have a over x, this, this uh, factor, plus b over the second factor right here. Yeah, we come across a problem here. So what happens now? We multiply every, everything both sides by x uh, times yeah x times x squared plus x plus three. We get well multiply this out x times x squared plus three. So if we do this. We get now I'll just write this right here. So what do we get here? This x is cancel, and this part right here is a x squared plus three. This cancels plus b times it by x times x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 3. So this cancels, this cancels. So we're, what we're left with now is x minus 3 is equal to a times x squared plus 3 plus now bx. So now, as you can see, we're coming out across a problem. Yeah, what happens here now is we expand this out. This will be ax squared plus a times 3 plus bx. So now let's solve for what we can. So x, there's one x here, there's one bx there. So x has to equal to bx. So b equals to 1. And now there's a negative 3, there's a 3. So we get a uh, 3, yeah, this equals to negative 3. So a just cancels out, equals to negative 1. And now the last part is this ax squared. It doesn't show up here, so 0, this has to equal 0 then. ax squared. So this means, well, x, x can be anything, so it can't be, uh, yes, yeah, so we can't set that to 0. So now a is equal to 0. But we have a equals to negative 1, so we cannot do this. Now the problem is that the b coefficient, once we uh, multiply everything out, as you can see, it's paired with just an x to the power of one, while the the yeah while the a coefficient is paired with x to the power of two. So there's an x power of two over here, and yeah over here, but there is no b to the power of two right there, and, and thus this problem is basically forcing upon one of the coefficients or one of the numerators here to be a higher power than the other one. And I've written that right here. This means that basically one of the numerators, basically the top of the um, of the rational function, of the partial fractions right here, so in this case, this one here has an x squared, uh, is, is being forced to have a higher power than the other one. In this case, there's going to be, well, just an x right there. So there's an x. This one will just will be left with just as an x squared. 
but yeah, but this isn't always the case. So basically, we could have in if in any given case, we could have a higher power on the other uh, other partial fraction. So we can't force this upon it, and thus we need to make both coefficients paired with the higher power. I will te uh, yeah, I will basically detail the proof of this in a later video, but in but by intuition, we need to account for it. And basically accounting for this size of the numerator or the power, we need to modify the normal technique for partial, de uh, partial fraction decomposition. And, and the way to do that is by the following. So basically x minus three. Now we have an, scroll back up here, what is that? So this is x, x squared plus three. Now this equals two. Yeah, this equals two. Well, this is gonna be a over x. So because this one, when we multiply it out, we'll have the x squared there. Plus now what we do is add a linear function. So plus bx plus c, and now this bottom one is here. So we add that for, for this higher power x squared, because when we multiply everything by this, uh, this cancels, we're left with an x, but we can have an x squared there so so doing the same thing multiply both sides by well x times x squared plus three on both sides yeah and now what we do is this will cancel so we're left with x minus three is equal to and now this one the x is cancel so we're left with a x squared plus three and now plus, now this side, there's a bx plus c, and now the x squared plus threes are canceled and we're left with an x. So what we get here is equal to x minus three, this is ax squared plus uh, a times three, plus now this x goes inside, bx squared plus cx. And now this bx squared adds up with this ax squared, so we get over here, x minus three is equal to, well, factor this x squared out, a plus b, x squared plus a times three plus c times x. So now in this case right here, uh, we know basically that since there's no x squared, this needs to add up to zero. So we have zero is equal to a plus b times x squared. So now the x squared divided out cancels, we're left with a plus b equals zero or a equals negative b. So we have that. Now this side, there's an a three. That's, the, that's we asked to equal to this negative three right there. So negative three is equal to a times three. Divide the threes out. a is equal to negative one. And then this one here, b is the negative of it. So b equals two, well, well plus one. So this has to be opposite of a. So we have a and b. And the last one is cx. That is only one x. x equals cx. So c is equal to one. Now if we put all of this together, we get x minus three is equal to right here. This is uh, x minus three divided by uh, x cubed plus three x equals two. Yeah, this equals to, well, a, which is negative one over x, plus now b, so then b is one times x plus c, which is one. So x plus one over now x squared plus three. Yeah, now this is our answer right here, and we can double check this. And as to double check this, we could just start off with this right side, negative one, a negative one over x plus, well this is now the x plus one over x squared plus three. This equals two. Uh, and when you multiply actually both sides by the common denominator, which is the combination of both of these. Actually, I mean we multiply so we get the common denominator. So we'll multiply this by x over x. And now this by uh, x squared plus three over x squared plus three. And now what we get here, uh, this is basically, well, negative one added to that. So this is negative x squared, negative three. And there's gonna be an x times x squared plus three. 
and now we'll multiply this inside plus x squared plus x right here. So multiply this, that inside there. And now add the top terms up and multiply this inside. We get, well, these x squareds cancel. We're left with an x minus 3. And now we're left with x cubed plus 3x. And there you go. We got the exact same thing as over here. So I wanted to double check that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hope you learned from this uh, video on partial fraction decomposition when the factors are non-linear. I'll go over some examples in later videos to illustrate this further, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned, and like always, you could download these exact notes in the link below, and thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.